Hello Omega fans, this is Randy back with another of our videos on old software from back in the day for the Amiga. The program we're going to look at today is Sculpt Animate 4D. This was, this is running on a 1.3 Amiga with 1 meg, no accelerator, and just kind of shows you how far ahead of its time this machine and the company software companies were in 1986 and 85 when they came out with this offering. We're running off floppies, as you can tell. Now, as this boots up and it has some more work to do, this is our down from the top down view. This is our one direction and this is a perpendicular direction. Sculpt sometimes uh, checks you to see if you're running it legitimately with some copy protection and asks for a page in the manual, a paragraph, and a word from a certain line in a paragraph. So we're going to wait to make sure it's happy with our operating it here. I believe we're going to be okay. It doesn't always ask for it, but it keeps you guessing. Well, what we're going to use today is a program, or I should say a scene. That's one of the presets. Not very complex. And we're not going to render it up in uh, full-on 24-bit because, frankly, we just don't have the time in this short video to do that. We're going to use the house and we're going to load Lamps Observer World Objects and uh, have it selected when it comes in. We're going to need to get some maneuvering space, so we're going to move it off that way. And we're going to zoom out a little bit. Now, the observer is the camera, the point from which the scene is viewed. And I think we're going to go kind of at the corner of the house and slightly above it, near the top of it. And then we we'll have to use location to set the observer's position. The target is where the camera is pointed, and that's what we're setting with target. Okay. Now, in all 3D modeling and rendering, you've got to have some light. So we're going to add. A lamp. Now we got the basics. We got some objects, we got some lights, we got a horizon and a ground. Over here in the observer, in the mode, we're going to run scan line painting. Now that's not 24 bit, that's not even ham, okay? And we're going to run with a wide angle lens. Our image size, we're just going to run full. It renders a little faster. And anti aliasing in this. Is we're going to run best. It doesn't make much difference because there's just not hardly enough colors to make a big difference. The ground color we're going to go, or sky color, we're going to go with a solid. Renders faster. And the ground color, we are going to go solid. But we're going to go a little darker and add a little red make it a little brown. Okay. And I think we're ready to render a picture. Now this is going to render rather quickly because we're not running photo quality. In this mode it displays early in the render and uh, when you're rendering in ham or rendering a 24-bit file, which is actually three files, red, green, and blue, it uh, can take up to 24 hours depending on the complexity of the scene, but it takes a long time to ray trace an image like that. Here comes our house. I believe there's actually a little table in the house. The door is open. And you can see the floor. And I think our house, house actually has a little pond on the front lawn. So isn't it upscale? Here comes our little pond now. Nothing's been sped up. This is a real-time render. Very handy, very useful. Get you an idea for laying out a 3D scene. Help you set up lights because it did ray trace for something like maybe a theater 
or they used it for logos. They would actually animate and then render the frames one at a time to a videotape recorder and that was scripted. So it was a very powerful piece of software for a rather mechanical day that depended on analog video. Um, like I say, it was a different time. You hear me say that every time. And it was. And the Amiga was defining our current situation with its innovation. It is clear that this machine has laid the groundwork for where we are today. So, as I always say, enjoy your Amiga. Thanks for watching.